the things that we always um, say as indigenous people, as, as Altam people, we say, we're just Altam. Altam are just people, you know, and we live by those uh, values of our ancestors. And those kind of ideas, uh, they're foreign ideas, and um, we're forced to live in it. And we do the best that we can to, to live in those. Yes, I have a passport now, but I don't have a birth record. How did that happen? In my homelands, uh, on my original homelands, I'm an undocumented person. And I have to carry this card. And I, and I have to instruct my and guide my elders, please carry your cards. When the Border Patrol stops you, you need to have those cards with you. Or you're going to get detained and imprisoned and, and deported from your own homelands, which has happened. And so one of the elders said, oh, so when the wind blows, they're going to stop it and ask it for papers? And so when the water flows, they're going to stop that and ask it for papers? And, and, and what about the migrating, migrating animals, you know, that migrate back and forth on the lands that have been doing it for, you know, uh, thousands of years, uh, the turtles and, you know, the animals that you don't think about? And so we wonder about that and how that's going to impact our next generations of people uh, because now this wall it will be there and who, long, who knows how long this wall is going to be there. Is it going to be there from our time until forever? And what purpose is the wall? Because it doesn't stop people. The reality of an ideal you know, existence in our homelands is to erase all those borders. Uh, we call it an arbitrary border. <laughs> you know, it's just a line there. We cross it all the time. We refuse to recognize it as traditional people. Our government people can recognize it, but as traditional people, we do not recognize it. And as traditional people throughout the lands, we should declare that we do not recognize these borders as the first action. <laughs> The reservation, Tohnaudam Nation, is on a uh, tenth of our original lands. Uh, original lands is uh, before it was Mexico, before it was the United States. It was a, a huge territory, the one in, in the, uh, the little space right there. The, it, it also has the sea, all the way to the sea, all the way to Hermosillo, Mexico, and, and to uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona, as we know it now. And and east of Tucson, Arizona, that is now there. So those vast lands, it holds uh, all our people's remains and part of the culture of our seeds um, um, that we have and our culture, um, which includes, um, you know, sacred spaces. The border uh, that came in 1853 is just another part of that continuation of our devastation of our way of life. The border divided uh, and forced communities to move by just a land survey. It was just a stake in the ground, a metal stake in the ground that marked where U.S. border and Mexico border was going to be. That forced people out of the land uh, moved to move away. And when the, and when the fences finally came, it also came with uh, immigration policies, United States immigration policies. But our, our uh, lands became, um, uh, I guess, um, th they divided people. Uh, there's autumn, autumn, there's four autumn bands. And those bands are the Hiachit autumn, the Tohono autumn, Akamur autumn, and Tohono autumn. The Tohono autumn nation, uh, the largest of, of those uh, four bands. We continue to be connected with uh, people on, on the uh, Mexico side called the Autumn in Mexico. Our lands are now, the reservation is the size of Connecticut, and it's sectored off in three sectors by the Border Patrol. So the Border Patrol are, have, uh, in each sector, there's 700 Border Patrol in each sector. And there's also an increase of that now so our reservation is completely militarized. 
it has a checkpoint at every exit where you have to declare your citizenship uh, and you have to carry your documents with you everywhere you go. If you're gonna go pick cactus fruit, the elders would have to take their, their uh, ID cards with them because they will get stopped and they will get interrogated by the border patrol. When our lands became more militarized after 9-11, uh, and I have to say that before 9-11, there was an increase of the border patrol on the lands. And when 9-11 um, happened with the bombing and all, uh, then they officially announced that there was gonna be an increase of border patrol on Altham lands. Homeland Security uh, wavered all uh, seven, uh, 37 protective laws to build the wall. So that impacts all of all the people um, because um, it impacts um, the water systems, the ancient water lagoons that are along the border and also the animals that live there and the people and the mountains and everything that's there. Uh, it, it impacts our people. In the beginning, uh, uh, when they first built the uh, vehicle barrier, they said, oh, it's for vehicles because there's a lot of drug trafficking and human trafficking across the land. So we said, okay, well then as people, we can walk across this. But that wasn't so. The border patrol still would stop people and force them to go around the port of entries. So that's the beginning of that but it's very restrictive there. Uh, uh, people are afraid because when the Border Patrol came, they can walk in your house and put everybody on the ground with their, their military rifles and uh, interrogate them. They can uh, stop you anywhere. They can uh, run you off the road. They can put a gun to your head, like they put a gun to my head, ask me whether to say if I was a US citizen or a Mexican citizen. And then those policies that are enforced on our people uh, that are uh, very devastating to our, to our mobility, our rights of mobility and our traditional, on our traditional routes, that ca uh, also restricts uh, a lot of our, uh, our way of life because there's things that we need on those, both sides of the border. And people are uh, either US citizens now or Mexican citizens and they're now restricted either way, coming and going. Uh, so uh, all my life, uh, I didn't know there was an international border because <laughs> we grow, w my father is, village is um, 15 miles south of the border and other communities in that, uh, in Mexico, what is Mexico. So all my life we were crossing back and forth to my father's village, to my mother's village, which is a quarter of a mile from the border on the US side. And until uh, later in my life, I realized it was an international border. Um, we continued to go back and forth to my father's community. And in 2015, the drug cartel wars began along the northern border of uh, Sonora, Mexico, uh, very violently just killing off entire communities. There's abandoned uh, communities all along the border. And my father's community was attacked uh, they took the ablest body, uh, adult male, and tied a rope around his neck and dragged him around in the community uh, with a car. And then they beat him up and he survived. But it forced uh, all the people to leave. Uh, they were forced to leave the community. Um, people are still now in exile in fear uh, although it's been four years now. And when in March of uh, this year, we traveled back to my father's community to just to be there to witness and see. So it was completely um, abandoned for four years. So it was completely vandalized. All the tin roofs off the buildings, all the usable lumber, all the possessions that were in their homes, uh, uh, private possessions and um, you know things that they use in the house tables chairs everything everything was uh, vandalized taken just the rubble of things that they they didn't use they didn't need I guess so we came back with um, elders uh, caravan of four four cars and uh, 13 elders got out and not one tear 
was shed, not one tear. We had equipment to start cleaning and they started cleaning. They cleaned little parts here and there, the, the church, the community church, the community um, kitchen that's just remnants of a kitchen outdoor and indoor. And they just started cleaning because all the workers that came, we still had to feed them, you know. So we're feeding them outside on a mesquite uh, grill. So <coughs> those uh, things that happened to us, it's not just us. It happened all across the border, uh, violence of uh, the cartels and and the corruption of the, mil uh, the Mexican uh, military and uh, officials that do have that do nothing to protect the, the people of the lands. We went back because we said that we didn't relinquish our rights to our community and we're, we're uh, determined to rebuild our community. Those, um, that's just, you know, on, on the Mexico side of, of what's happening. I'm not sure if I, that's um, a part of that, that story, but I, I just wanted to say that um, the resilience of people uh, is is um, it's inspirational when you see your elders and if I, if my sister was there she would be crying the whole time <laughs> and, and and nobody cried and they just picked up a tool and started cleaning the community that's been abandoned for four years so that's that's the devastation that's happening on the Mexico side. Uh, when the elder said, um, now you've heard my story, you're obligated now. It's your story. Now it's your obligation to carry on the responsibility of taking care of that and being uh, in defense of the land and the, and the whole uh, uh, system of which we live in, which includes the water and the land and all the animals and the people. Mm -hmm.